Hey everybody, my name is Josh, joshallmusic.com. This is Shavasana and Kitty YouTube channel. And if you're just dropping in, welcome. If you've never seen me before, hey, join me. Um, if you're coming back, thanks. And um, today's lesson is called, um, I don't have time or when can I practice? And this is kind of a philosophical lesson, but it's also a story. And so here we go. When I was 14 years old, and I started playing guitar. I had a walk home from um, my junior high school and eventually my high school that was about 15 minutes. It was, I kind of lived about a mile away and I'd be walking. And a lot of times I was walking alone. You know, it was a lonely road and I walked it alone. And anyway, the point is that as I got more and more interested in the guitar and how it worked, I would start doing things like, oh, well, the low E low E string is E, what's the first fret? F, and then I'd start visualizing. Third fret is G, fifth fret is A, seventh fret is B, eighth fret is C, 10th fret is D, 12th fret is E. And I would do that with all the strings and eventually you'd know all the notes. And, and then I would turn it into a game. I'd be like, oh, well, what's the sixth fret of the D string? And I'd be like, oh, well, that's, you know, A flat or G sharp. What's the seventh fret of the B string? Oh, F sharp, G flat, cool. What's the 11th fret of the high E string? Oh, D flat. I mean, D-sharp, E-flat, you know, and you'd start running that. And then it would become like, okay, well, how do you spell some chords? Well, A minor is easy, so A, C, E, great, cool, you feel good, you know. A major, A, C-sharp, E, isn't that cool? G major, G, B, D, G minor, G, B-flat, D. You'd start doing that, and you'd be like, oh, how do you spell B augmented anyway? B, D-sharp, F double sharp? Now, certainly when I was in high school, I didn't know what... F double sharp was. I didn't probably wasn't even a thing I even considered existing. I probably would have called it G. And honestly, when I'd be talking to people, I would probably say it was a G because it just made it easier, all right, for people to deal with. They don't have to think quite as hard. Theory mind, once you've gone through conservatory or whatever, you it changes things a little bit. Point is, is this, is that Eventually, it also became scales and be like, okay, well, what's F major? And you run that, run that. Or maybe you do A mixolydian, you know, and you're like, what's A mixolydian? And you'd be like, oh, you know, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G natural, A. What's that in relationship to A major? Well, it's lower than seven. What is your parent major scale? Oh, it's D major. Like those kinds of things, just to kind of run them in your head. And then it might be you start cycling, you start cycling chords. Oh, okay, cool. Let's cycle the harmonic minor scale. Let's do C harmonic minor and let's cycle it in fours, right? And eventually you get home and you can sit down with your guitar and like, well, I was just cycling four and harmonic minor. Let's do it. And there's a lot of ways that you could cycle those chords, here's one. So I'd start, here's my C minor, and I go C minor. Next chord will be F minor, and then B diminished, and then E flat augmented, and then I'm running out of space. So, okay, let's go A flat major, D diminished, G major to C. And that's like one way of moving around the neck, doing a cycle four, in a little triadic arpeggios in the C harmonic minor scale. There's a lot of other ways to do it too, and it's a lot of fun to just kind of play around with that. And I'd go up one, down another, and all kinds of things like that. And I'd do that in my head during walks. And as I went to conservatory, I'd be doing that on my way to class. And on my way to work, now that I'm a music teacher, I've been teaching for 27 years in this middle school. I do you know choruses, bands, and things like that. And I teach guitar and that kind of stuff. I would be doing it in my drive. I have a 40 minute commute. There's a lot of time to think. I'd be solfeging things, I can talk to me things. There's a whole world of stuff you can do without your instrument. And so then when you get your hands on your instrument, you can be like, oh, you know, maybe I'm in between classes. Kids haven't shown up yet. I'm gonna run some scales. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some things, right? So the point is this. People say, I don't have time to practice. And the truth is, is you do. You have all kinds of time to practice. You just have to choose to. And it's a matter of being focused. I use music to self-regulate. If I'm feeling really stressed or I'm like got some kind of thing going on in my life, sometimes running like, hey, let's do the minor seven intervals, starting on A, going down, um, you know, go A, G, G, F. 
you know, F, E flat like that, and just do that. And then boom, 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 boom. You know, that to me is relaxing. I can go there. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, isn't that nice? And um, that can be, like I said, a way to calm down. Way to be able to kind of face the day. And it makes only, takes only a little bit. And then I'm cool again, level. And I'll do that before kids come in. I'll do that, you know, while I'm waiting for a meeting. <laughs> I'll be doing that um, while I'm in line at the grocery store, at the DMV, or some other situation where I know I'm just going to be waiting. I never wait. You know, I'll practice patience. I might practice breathing. I might run a mantra. I might run a scale. I might spell some chords, you know. And those are things that I will just do because here I am. I'm on this planet. I've got this much time. I've got this many breaths. I might as well use them. Might as well use them for something useful. You know, I could take out my phone and I could do some scrolling. No, not so much. So some people will be like, oh, I practice eight hours a day. I don't even know how much I practice. I have no idea. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is that if I'm focused, I can focus on music. If I need to focus, I can focus on music. The only time I don't really do that is when, I'm, when my attention needs to be on somebody else. So like if a student's talking to me, my attention is on them. If my colleague is talking to me, my attention's on them. My spouse, my children, my attention's on them. If I'm using a table saw, my focus is on that. I don't want to be running, you know, the, the Phrygian dominant <laughs> cycle of five when I could potentially cut my fingers off. It's not a very good idea. So you can practice all the time whenever you can focus on it. But make sure that it's something you should be focusing on and not something that is maybe more important, like your spouse, or your partner, or your children. Pay attention to them. And when you've got a moment you're carrying in the wood for the fire or something, then run some scales. Anyway, if you thought this was useful, helpful in some way, like, comment, subscribe, do all those good things. You may find my little um, eBooks on my website really useful. They're little practices things that I do on a regular basis just to um, build the kinds of skills that um, I feel like you need to really be able to play. Um, I walk you through them. They have all kinds of recording examples. Um, I step-wise, useful stuff. Anyway, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.